So earlier I was asked about our communities. We we practice, you know, of course, miracles, but we actually have two guidelines that in our spiritual communities around the world, and those two guidelines are no people pleasing and no private thoughts, because they're designed to encourage getting in touch with unconscious patterns and thoughts, letting letting them come to the surface. And instead of being afraid of them, like Armel was saying, believing that they're true and stuffing them down, back down into the unconscious mind, it's like, let them out. You know, just like a, let, if you have a wound, let, let it have sunlight and air. Let the, the dark thoughts come up into awareness and hold the space, hold the love and the acceptance and let people move through their emotions like we do when we would go through grieving. That's really what a funeral, I think, is about. Why is a funeral helpful? It, it's a backdrop for healing. It's a time to cry, it's a time to let up those thoughts and feelings that are very intense, that have been pushed down. And you feel so much better when you've, when you've sat with a dear friend and poured out your heart, and you poured out all your emotions and all your thoughts, and you feel like you're unburdened, like somehow you got to have the burden taken away. We practice that on a daily basis, uh, with lunch times and so forth. And we use it because it works. It's it's fantastic. Is that what you call an expression session? Expression sessions. Mm. It's really the the purpose and the intention behind it really makes it work. So it's like it's it's not a venting sessions. These are not projection sessions. This is not blame sessions. What it is is once you start to see the value and the allowance and the permission of, of letting things up, instead of stuffing them down and repressing them, you, you can start to see the great value of this. And really, everyone, it's, it's, it's really good to cultivate that for everyone. So there's a sense of spacious non-judgment. Just like if you had a dear friend, someone who you loved and, and they loved you, and you could speak your mind, and you knew they would wink at you, or they'd go, oh, <laughs> they'd give you a hug, you know, no matter what you said. Really, you know, because it, you see how freeing that is when you can, with a dear friend, that's kind of an example of a, like a mini expression session. Someone who's deeply trusted and loved that you could confide in safely and have them not take the error real because they love you so dearly. That's what, we're actually having that happen now in groups, larger groups. I was actually doing it in China, you know, with large groups of people, and people were wailing and screaming and letting up all kinds of emotions, and then crying, bursting into tears. Uh, one woman came up, I was doing more like Gangaji, the hot seat, you know, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't go around and be with all, whatever, hundred people, so I would say, have somebody come up, and they would bring them up, and I would be there, and I would just be looking in their eyes with all the love in my heart, and you're perfect, you're just, oh, you're so, you're a wonderful child of God. And then they would emote, or whatever, that they had been repressing. Sometimes they shouted at me. I mean, mm. one woman just screamed at me for like five minutes, mm. just raged and raged and raged, and then she, she just burst into tears. Mm. And then, at the end of that, her face mm. just lit up. It was just like, it, she, it was just very quick, like a thunderstorm that went through. And then she was just like, and she, then she invited me to her town to do a gathering, and you know, it went from the screamer <laughs> to come and come and be with me, you know. But, but and, and we know that how that is in relationships, you know, when you have a friction and somebody's got a lot of intensity and friction there, if you can just hold them or love them, then the storm goes through, and they're so grateful. They're like, thank you, oh my gosh, thank you. This is the greatest thing. They feel the immediate healing. So with these expression sessions, it's, it's always important to have the purpose or the intention right out front. That you're not really doing this to point the finger at anybody, to blame. A lot of times, when you're in that presence of truly, I want to heal, you'll use more I statements. I feel, I feel, I feel. Not you bastard, you backstabber, <laughs> you know. If, if it's coming out with a lot of you yeah. statements, oh the ego can get drawn in really quick. Me! No. And we also have no cross-talking. 
<laughs> so we've, we've done these sessions where we'll do a session and somebody will just start to let the emotions up and they'll start to, they'll be shaking and they'll just start to let it out and we've got a, you know, a psychiatrist in the group or someone who's going to say, an, an advice giver. Mm. <laughs> it's just as they're trembling and they say their first few words. Now, this is what you really need to do here. Yeah. This is what I would recommend. And they're like, you know, they're just, they're just ready to let the emotion come to the surface and all of a sudden, wham! You know, the knife comes in with the advice. So we're cross-talking, no. Advice giving, no. Um, teaching. You get a whole group and they're Course in Miracles students. And somebody starts to just get in touch with their emotions and they're trembling and it's like, now, you know what the Course says on page 52, you know, and they're like, you know, because they're just getting in touch with their emotions. They just want to let it up and out, and they don't need to hear that quote at that time. So it's a spaciousness. It's like a soft spaciousness to allow it up and out, where everybody's in agreement. We're going to hold the love, almost like we're going to hold the space and let everybody, let whoever needs to speak, speak. And I just have watched in our communities over the years how healing it is. It's like an accelerated healing process. One time at the monastery, um, there was a couple that came and they brought their own laptop and everything, and we were working on um, they were working on some project or whatever. And you know how these browsers are; you can set them so if you type a few letters in on the browser, if it's a page you've been to before, mm -hmm. it will just fill it in. You know, it just remembers. It goes into the history and the memory of it. Well. Well, the woman in the couple was in there working on a project at the monastery. She was typing in, you know, the thing in the browser, and what came up was a porn site. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, and you know, and how the browsers load real quickly, you know, and before she could finish typing in, I don't know what was on the site, penises, breasts, or something. She's like, at a monastery, just, oh, it was a shocking experience. It's like, it's like, like going to visit Mother Teresa and go, ah! Yikes, what's that? So anyway, she was like, ah! So she was like, oh, so she had all these emotions, and she was just like, she was so shocked. And then she realized it was, it was their computer. It was a computer that her husband used, which was, that was a, ah! It was a, and then, apparently she probably, she looked at him and just was like, He was close. Oh. <laughs> it went from shock to like rage, like. Uh. So then, I was in the monastery at the desk, mm -hmm. and I was in there and talking to a friend of mine, and they came bursting in the door, and there was this wailing, wailing sound. Mm -hmm. It was almost like, you know, sometimes when somebody's died and the family <laughs> just wail and wail. I'm in there talking, having a regular conversation in the monastery. Ah! 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 ah. I was just. And, I saw a penis. That, that was underneath it, yeah. And so, so anyway, we come in there and they both come in there. And the first thing I said to my friend, she said to me, she said, Who died? I mean, she. it literally sounded like the sound. <laughs> somebody makes when somebody, a family close to family member dies. So they came in and uh, the wife was just really pouring it out and the, the husband was sitting kind of with a cheapish look on his face like, you know, okay, it's a bomb was ignited. So this was like about 11.30 in the morning and then they came and just there was a huge amount of emoting for like 20 minutes and then it's like they went back to their projects. And then at one o'clock, I decided to sit in on the lunchtime expression session at the monastery. <laughs> so I went in there and I sat down, and uh, the husband was talking about the pornography and this all his shame. This is an example, letting up all of his emotions of shame, of guilt, of embarrassment, of his thoughts, and this and this, and it's, it's maybe like twenty. 15, 20 people having lunch while he's setting up with this emotion. And then, interestingly enough, it triggered emotion in like two or three of mm. other of the men who said, mm. well, now you've talked about my issue. I didn't know that it would come up in this way, but mm. so they started talking about their, their attraction to pornography, the guilt and shame around it, and this and this. It, it became 
part of the open healing flow of these repressed emotions and thoughts that were still down there that really needed to come up. And this was just a backdrop to let all this wonderful healing occur. And it, you could feel the energy of the whole room. It went on, it wasn't like an hour lunch, it went on for like an hour and a half, two hours. It was very, very healing. And then afterwards, two or three people came up and said, Oh my God, that's been, that was profound. Like, I, I was amazed. You see how practical, there was no sense of trying to guide the discussion, there was no sense to try to facilitate anything, it was the Holy Spirit is there, is the presence of love, and they were able to do that. And then also recently when I was in China, a friend of mine who had a lot of, what he called, sexual issues and, and inhibitions and so on and so forth, he voluntarily came up in front of the whole room and we just joined. It turned into a DVD. I don't even know if we brought it along with us, but it, it was like healing the shame around sexuality, where he just emoted all of his shame that he's carried since childhood um, in, a, in a very deep way. His face was shaking and bright red, and, and you could see his whole body it was just, it was like very traumatic to even let these memories and these self criticism and judgments up in awareness. And then after he did that for some time, maybe 35-45 minutes, then the Holy Spirit gently came through me in a very light way talking about sexuality and bodies and body positions and fluids and appropriate fluids at appropriate times and inappropriate times and all the, it was just a, a very light humorous talk, almost like an angelic talk of the angelic realm going, you are taking this sexuality thing way too serious and you've got a lot of shame built up over a lot of judgments and concepts and that you're holding on to about yourself and others. What's, a, what's appropriate, what's inappropriate. And it was very light and playful, almost like, just relax. You know, what you think you've done, you have not done. This is part of your hallucination in this world. You, you're innocent. It came through very light and innocent, and his face just lit up, you know, by the end he was big grin ear to ear and he was slowing, and then after that he, he ended up getting into a relationship and he's still in a relationship, you know, his inhibitions just cracked and popped open, and then the spirit was like, oh good, now we'll take, take it to the next level of we'll have you go into a relationship where you can have beautiful mirroring that goes on, where you both help each other free yourself from these unconscious beliefs. So, so it just shows you the power that's available there, but I think the most important thing is the presence. That you have to really let this stuff come up with a willingness to, to truly heal and release. And if the ego gets in there and it tries to turn it into a blame session, projection, you know, all those things, then that, the energy of that just spins the whole thing off in another way, and that's why it takes a while to really get into the vibe of that, for everyone to get into that, that vibe, for the maximal healing. Yeah. In your groups of the person who holds spirit, so to speak, do they express as well or not, or do you think that's not a good idea? And um, Generally, the ones holding the spirit in space don't speak. Um, there, there are exceptions, um, like people, they seem to love to have me in the expression sessions. No matter how deep and dark it is, and no matter how dense and tight and friction, when I'm there, you know, the spirit just kind of comes ripping through with, with inspiration and joy and everything like that. So occasionally, when I've been at it, it will come through that way. But in general, if you have a group of people, most of them are just learning to practice holding the presence and watching their own thoughts watching their own mind and their own reactions, really praying for the Holy Spirit to use it for healing in their mind. And there's not a lot of, um, of words other than the one that's, that's letting the emotions up. <laughs>